Out of the depths we cry to you, O Lord. Hear our voice and answer our prayers. The word of the Lord is like fire in my bones. I am weary with holding it in. What does the Holy One require of us? To do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with our God. Shall we pray? Mighty and merciful God, lover of justice and equity, you call us to support the weak, to help those who suffer, and to honor all people, especially those to whom honor is owed for their selfless sacrifice. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for the veterans among us, those living, and the saints who have gone before. We give thanks to you for their servanthood to us. We pray for actively serving members of the uniformed services and ask your protection over them and their families. Guide us, Lord, as we seek to love our neighbors who are veterans and render them honor. Heal our brokenness and bring us together as your people. And lead us, God, to work together toward the pursuit of your promised reign when nation shall not lift sword against nation, and neither shall we learn war any more. By the power of your Holy Spirit, make us advocates for your justice. Make us instruments of your peace, so that all may be reconciled in your beloved community. Through Christ our Savior. Amen. Salvation for 
For which, O Lord, you taught us to reading from Ephesians. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace. In his flesh he has made both groups into one and has broken down the dividing wall, that is, the hostility between us. He has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances that he might create in himself one new humanity in place of the two, thus making peace, and might reconcile both groups to God in one body through the cross, thus putting to death that hostility through it. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off, and peace to you who are near. For through him both of us have access to, in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God.
I would share with you now a poem called My Soul, There is a Country by Henry Vaughan. My soul, there is a country afar beyond the stars where stands a winged sentry all skillful in the wars. There above noise and danger sweet peace sits crowned with smiles and one born in a manger commands the beauteous files. He is thy gracious friend. And, O oh, my soul, awake, did in pure love descend to die here for thy sake. If thou canst get but thither, there grows the flower of peace, the rose that cannot wither, thy fortress and thy ease. Leave then thy foolish ranges, for none can thee secure, but one who never changes, thy God, thy life, thy cure. That dimly shines through all our hopes and prayers and dreams, guide us to justice, truth, and love, delivered from our selfish schemes. May swords of hate fall from our hands, our hearts from reading from the prophet Isaiah. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. O house of Jacob, come let us walk in the light of the Lord. Eternal Father, strong to save, would 
reading from Psalm 37. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret over those who prosper in their way, over those who carry out evil devices. Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Do not fret. It leads only to evil. For the wicked shall be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord shall inherit the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked will be no more. Though you look diligently for their place, they will not be there, but the meek shall inherit the land and delight themselves in abundant prosperity. The Lord knows the days of the blameless, and their heritage will abide forever. They are not put to shame in evil times. In the days of famine, they have abundance. But the wicked perish, and the enemies of the Lord are like the glory of the pastures. They vanish like smoke. They vanish away. Mark the blameless, and behold the upright, for there is prosperity, posterity for the peaceable. But transgressors shall be altogether destroyed. The posterity of the wicked shall be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their refuge in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them. He rescues them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him.
I invite you to join me now in a time of prayer. It comes from our Book of Common Worship and parts of On Peace and War by Walter Brueggemann. Let us pray. Gracious God, by day and night we pour out our prayer to you. We are crying out for justice, yearning for what is right, longing for your peace. Come quickly to help us, O God. Save all who call upon your name. We are bewildered, whether we are liberators or invaders, whether they are terrorists or freedom fighters, whether we should yearn for peace or savor victory. The world has become so strange and our place in it so tenuous. Where gray seems clearer than the white purity of our hopes or the darkness of our deathly passions, there is so little agreement among us, perhaps so little truth among us, so little, good Lord, that we scarcely know how to pray or for what to pray. We do know, however, to whom we pray. We pray to you, Creator God, who wills the world good. We pray to you, Redeemer God, who makes all things new. We pray to you, Stirring Spirit, Healer of the nations. We pray for guidance. And before that, we pray in repentance for too much wanting the world on our own terms. We pray, merciful God, for your powerful mercy to put the world and us in a new way, a way after Jesus who gave himself, a way after Jesus who confounded the authorities and who lived more excellently well must, Lord God, by your newness, by peace on your terms, the newness you have promised, of which we have seen glimpses in your Son, who is ever and always our Lord. And now hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Sing of 
have slaves set free and children fed. Alleluia. With earthly faith we sing a song of heaven. A life fulfilled, a love all wrong forgiven. Christ is our sign of hope. Christ is risen. Alleluia. With all creation, pain and anger past, evil exhausted, love supreme at last. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Alleluia. Go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen.